Hello, my name is Mike, and this video will focus on audio mastering secrets for Adobe Premiere Pro. Let's dive right in. And I've started a new project right here in Premiere Pro, and I'm going to drag and drop into my media window right here two files. One is me, and one is my guest from a podcast. I'll then select both of them and drag and drop them onto my timeline down here. Now you'll notice that they're side by side, which is not quite perfect. I want to just move this guest up and move the audio down onto audio track two, and then align them like so. So now my guests are aligned, I can start to work on both audio tracks and make sure they sound as good as possible. Now, instead of working on the whole 30 minute podcast, I'm gonna quickly chop this down to a short 30 second portion that we can work on in this video. Okay, here we go. We've got a 30 second clip of both me and my guest speaking in this Premiere Pro project. Let's play back. Let's maybe start in Photoshop and then listen to my guest. Right now, the biggest thing that's going on. Right okay, you'll notice there, there's a disparity in audio levels. So if I hover over and play my audio as we watch this audio meter over here, you'll see. I'm sort of between minus 12 and minus 6 dB. Not too bad, but my guest is coming up between minus 18 and minus 24 dB. So this is going to be the first audio mastering trick because if we listen to or watch this video, the levels will be very unpleasant for the end user. We want to make sure that those are as close to each other as possible. You'll notice actually that both my guest and I are using the same microphone. So that's not a problem. They're just at different audio levels. So to fix this, what we'll do is we'll select both clips like so. So we've got my audio clip and my guest over here, and then we'll go over to the essential sound panel. Now, usually this is over here in the top right if you're in the default workspace, but if you can't find essential sound, it's over in window, just click essential sound and it should pop up for you. Now there's a really simple mastering technique you can use here. It's called loudness. Now usually this is collapsed by default. So once you've selected your multiple clips and you select loudness, you just click the auto match button. Yes, I kid you not, it's as simple as that. That's all you need to do because Premiere Pro has done the loudness analysis under the hood and it's pulled all of the audio up to minus 23 luffs. So you'll see my audio now, if I hover, <laughs> is kind of going between, well, it's kind of bang on minus 12, really. And then my guess, it's kind of very close to minus 12 too. So this is a brilliant start. We've got both audio levels matching in just pretty much a couple of clicks of the mouse in Premiere Pro. Now, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you throw a like and subscribe to my channel for more and leave a comment down below with the next video you'd like to see from me. So once we've got stuff at the same audio level, we can then go ahead and use the rest of essential sound or even some advanced mastering techniques to make this audio sound as good as possible. So we've got repair. If anyone had background noise, we can switch on reduce noise and we can increase this slider to 10, which is full on noise reduction. This will reduce the quality of your audio or zero for no noise reduction. Now, both of these clips are not noisy. We'll cover noise reduction in more detail in another video. So we won't worry about repairing right now. Clarity, however, is interesting. It will make the voice louder and easier for the listener to hear. So right now, let's listen to the transition between me and my guest. Exciting you right now in that app. Right now, the biggest thing that's going on right now is... Okay, so you'll hear that both speakers sound pretty clear, but if I select both clips, switch on dynamics and start to gradually increase dynamics, listen to what happens to the audio. Exciting you right now in that app. Right now, the biggest thing that's going on right now is generate a fill, of course, uh, which you can use to fill anything with anything. So you'll notice that as I increase dynamics, our speaker gets clearer. So you can dial this in to get a really good sounding voice. So, so far we've got the audio levels the same and we've increased clarity. I might just pull that down a little bit and leave it about four. That's pretty decent there. Then we can go on and we can turn clip volumes up or down. You might notice these clip meters indicating distortion switched on when I push dynamics to the top. Now, if for whatever reason you wanted to push this right up, you are going to introduce clipping. Let's play back. 
uh, which you can use. Look at that clipping. That is not good. We don't desire that. So then we can take the clip volume and we can pull it down maybe by a couple of dB here. And you'll notice as I did that, the level automatically enabled. So it's smart essential sound because it knows what you want to do. Uh, which you can use to fill anything with anything. OK, so that's cool. So now we're getting a very consistent level of about minus three dB on the meters. This is excellent. Now, I wouldn't advise going as crazy as 10 on the dynamic scale, but you can and you just back off the clip volume if needed. Again, I'll move this down to about four and I'll move the clip volume back up to zero dB. Further on, we can go through here. There is the possibility to add EQ through Essential Sounds, but personally, I'm not a fan of the EQ that is included here because you can only choose from a few presets here. There is podcast voice, but I don't really think it's a good use of EQ. So I wouldn't recommend using this inside Essential Sound. And still, until Adobe allow you to have presets inside EQ, uh, which presently are pretty tough to set up, I would suggest setting this up another way. And I'm going to show you now and in this section of the video we'll get into advanced audio mastering techniques. Now in order to do this we'll click up here and we'll change our workspace to be the audio workspace and now whoa this looks very overwhelming and very complex but don't worry we're going to simplify it. Up here above our mixing desk here, this is representing each audio track. So this track here is audio track one and this track here is audio track two. We'll pop open this triangle and now we've got some effects racks. Now, if you've ever used Adobe Audition, that's Adobe's audio editor, pretty much the effects work exactly the same way. And now that we've done audio leveling and we've also done a bit of compression, we can add some EQ to each track. Let's start off by adding EQ to my speaking track. So we're going Go back to my speaking track and go here and go to filter and EQ and we'll go for a parametric equalizer. I'll show you how to set this up simply on my audio track. Double click and you'll see we get a flat line. Now a good working space to start from is a preset called Vocal Enhancer. Let's listen to what it sounds like with Vocal Enhancer on. Let's maybe start in Photoshop. Okay, so that's me with Vocal Enhancer on. Now I'm just gonna move this over here, rewind it and disable that effect. Let's maybe start in Photoshop and then switch it on. What little AI extras? So you can see that obviously it's enhanced the high end. I wouldn't recommend that amount of enhancement, but it has done a high pass filter, removing the low end and the rumble from the audio, which is what we want. It's dipped around the muddy 300 hertz area. And of course we can dial this high end. I would probably put a more high end uh, like so, and maybe change the shape of this little high end here so we can get a nice high end peak without being too aggressive. Uh, exciting you right now. And it just kind of sparkles up the high end and makes it sound a lot better. Now, if we like that effect and we want to copy it over to our guest track, it's as simple as dragging and dropping. So you don't have to reset parametric equalizer for the second audio track here where our guest is speaking. You can double click to open and you'll see you've got an exact copy of the EQ you set up. Now, the guest might sound different or have a different microphone, so you might want to tweak this around, but I'm going to leave it as is for now. And we've already done an incredible amount. If you look at this big volume level meter now, as I scrub through, you'll see I'm hitting around minus 12 dB. Also, my guest is hitting minus 12. So this is going to be an amazing listening and viewing experience for our end viewer. But I did want to show you a couple more things that you can do as the finalization to really master your audio in Premiere Pro and make it pop out of the speakers without overwhelming the viewer. And this is over here in this track here. Now you might see this track doesn't have any extras down here. And if we go down to the bottom, you'll see it's called Mix. Now the same in our timeline, if we scroll down, you'll see we have a Mix track. So what is the Mix track in Adobe Premiere Pro? Well, it is the final set of effects you add to all tracks on your timeline. So every single audio track, if you have audio here in track one, track two, three, or four, will then be finally processed by the mix track and any effects you might put there. Okay, so how are we going to use this mix track then? Well, first of all, we'll start by going into amplitude and compression and adding a hard limiter. This will be the mastering magic that will 
get your audio to exactly the right level it needs to be. Now to set this up by default, we're actually gonna set the maximum amplitude to minus one dB, again, to give that headroom for our audio. And the input boost will currently leave at zero dB. We don't need to worry about any of these other settings. And the next thing and the final thing we'll put in on the mix track will be under special, because it's a very, very special effect. It's called loudness meter. Now, loudness meter will tell us if our audio is at the correct level for the platform we're publishing on. Let me show you how it works. If I open it up and have a look, you'll see a bunch of meters. Don't worry about those. Look straight at presets. And you'll see here common places you might want to put your content, such as Apple Podcast, might be on Spotify, or a YouTube video. I'm going to select YouTube, and then it will put all the presets in so you can really dial your audio in. If we go under settings, you'll see it wants a target loudness of minus 14 LUFs. Let's look at the levels as we play the audio back. This effect works in real time as you play audio. Let's maybe start in Photoshop. What little AI extras are exciting you right now in that app? Okay, so we've played enough audio to get an integrated loudness, which is what we're looking for of minus 18. So it's about four off where it should be. Short term is in the moment. We don't need to worry about that. Loudness range is how much the audio varies in volume. And true peak obviously is where is that peak? Where is the maximum amplitude of your audio? And it's about minus 1.9. Obviously, we don't want it to go over that or to zero because that's indicating distortion. So with that knowledge, we can double click the hard limiter and let's input boost it by 4 dB to see if that gets us to where we should be. I'll close that down, rewind, open the loudness meter and play back. Now, before I do, one important thing to do is reset your loudness meters, okay? Then we're starting from scratch. Let's maybe start in Photoshop. What little AI extras are exciting you right now in that app? Right now, the biggest thing that's going on right now is generate a fill, of course, uh, which you can use to fill anything with anything. Okay, that's good. So we've played about 15 seconds of audio and we've got an integrated loudness of minus 15.5. Now, you might have noticed when I started playing back, it went orange. Let's maybe start in Photoshop. But of course it won't if I don't reset the meters. So let's do that. Let's maybe start in... You see, we go loud, but overall, over time, the loudness was in range. Just a little bit too quiet for YouTube. So again, we can go back to our hard limiter, maybe increase by another dB to 5 dB in Put boost, double click the loudness meter, rewind, reset and play again. Let's maybe start in Photoshop. What little AI extras are exciting you right now in that app? Right now, the biggest thing that's going on right now is generate a fill, of course, uh, which you can use to fill anything with anything. And you'll see now we've got an integrated loudness of minus 14.6 LUFs. That's ideal for YouTube. And we've done that in just a short amount of time, just a couple of minutes, and we've got our loudness levels dialed in. So really, a lot of these features in Adobe Premiere Pro are super powerful and easy to use. Mastering secrets you're going to love for your next project, whether it's just getting all the audio the same level, compressing it so it can be heard better, adding equalization to each track to improve the speaker on each audio track and video track, or going and using that mix track to add the hard limiter and use the loudness meters to match everything up and make sure you're at the right standard for the platform you're publishing to. If you really enjoyed this video, make sure to throw a like, subscribe to my channel because I'm always doing stuff like this, and you'll see a video on your screen right now if you want to go further down the rabbit hole with audio tips and tricks, make sure to click and watch that next.